Surface currents flow west to east along the equator. These currents are called equatorial countercurrents because they flow against the direction of the prevailing winds and opposite the direction of the currents that flow on either side of the equator around the large central gyres. In fact, the presence of these eastward currents flowing counter to the prevailing winds provided some of the earliest hints of the complexities of wind-driven ocean circulation. Some early work done to understand the cause of equatorial countercurrents was performed in the Pacific. North and south of the equator, prevailing easterly trade winds move water westward across the ocean basin forming the north and south equatorial currents. Because the Coriolis effect is relatively weak at low latitudes, these currents don't experience much deflection, allowing them to travel with the wind to the western side of the basin. When they reach the land on the western boundary, much of the water is deflected poleward, forming the western boundary currents. The simplest explanation of the equatorial countercurrent is that some amount of water that reaches the boundary gets deflected equatorward and then has nowhere to go but back across the basin. And it is this piling up of water between the two flanking currents which forms the equatorial countercurrent. The position of the equatorial countercurrent is somewhat variable, but its mean position is north of the equator in a region called the intertropical convergence zone. The intertropical convergence zone, or ITCZ, is where both the southern and northern trade winds die out. This region is called the tropical doldrums and is characterized by very weak winds. It is this lack of wind shear on the surface that allows the equatorial countercurrent to flow on the surface back across the basin. To fully appreciate how the current forms, it is useful to realize that the flow of water westward in the north and south equatorial currents do actually cause water levels to be higher on the western boundary so that there is a real elevation difference across the ocean at the equator, with sea surface heights being about half a meter higher in the equatorial western Pacific relative to the eastern Pacific. This elevation difference creates a pressure gradient from west to east. The pressure difference causes water at the surface to flow away from the region of high pressure near the western boundary. Unlike the central gyres where water flowing down the pressure gradients turns due to Coriolis deflection, the water at the equator travels straight down the gradient forming the countercurrent. Not all of the water flowing east in reaction to the pressure gradient flows along the surface. An additional current called the equatorial undercurrent forms right along the equator at the bottom of the mixed layer along the thermocline. Like the equatorial countercurrent, the undercurrent forms to move water eastward to balance the pressure gradient. While the equatorial countercurrent flow is north of the equator in the intertropical convergence zone where winds are weak, the equatorial undercurrent flow occurs right on the equator where the southern trade winds are strong enough to create wind shear at the surface pushing water westward. The presence of these winds and the resulting wind shear prevents eastward flow right at the surface. This pushes the flow to balance the pressure gradient below the surface to the thermocline along the base of the pressure gradient. The equatorial undercurrent is a narrow, fast-flowing current. Its location right on the equator strongly influences its behavior. Because it is on the equator, the bulk of the current experiences no Coriolis deflection. If for some reason the flow does deviate from the equator, Coriolis deflection, which is to the right in the northern hemisphere and to the left in the southern hemisphere, will turn the water back into the main flow, reinforcing its characteristic narrow, fast-flowing behavior. Some models suggest that upwelling along the equator also contributes to the strength of the current as water flowing towards the equator at depth becomes entrained into the eastward flow. Equatorial countercurrents and equatorial undercurrents are dynamic features of all three major equatorial ocean basins. Volumes and rates vary over the seasonal cycle, with the most dramatic seasonal variation occurring in the Indian Ocean where the currents change in response to monsoon-driven changes in wind direction. There is interannual variation as well, especially in the Pacific, where variations in the height of the pressure gradient and distribution of water temperatures across the basin vary with the El Nino Southern Oscillation Cycle. If you found this video helpful, please consider sharing it and giving it a thumbs up. Feel free to comment with any questions or suggestions, and if you would like to keep up with the content here at Science Primer, click the subscribe button.
Thank you for watching.